If you're anything like me, you might feel consistently busy with work, school, home responsibilities. And as a father of a two-year-old who is constantly on the road, currently I'm actually sitting outside our place in India right now getting prepared for our next retreat. I want to share with you some really powerful and simple practices you can use that stem from the philosophy I follow, Advaita Vedanta, that can help you integrate spiritual practice into what you're already doing. It doesn't matter if you're working 40 hours a week right now or if you're taking full-time classes. You can still integrate these next few steps into all of that and see all of it in a new light. The first practice and essentially the foundation of Advaita, of Vedanta, coming into union with the divine, is the practice of Atma Vicharya, which roughly translates from Sanskrit to English as self-inquiry. Essentially, this is just the practice of continuously asking yourself and coming back to the question, who am I? Who am I? really. Because especially when we have a busy life, the answers to this question are based on the ego, on the small self, on the things we are doing now, what we are chasing now, what we are affected by now. And day to day on a material level, these answers to who am I change based on our mood and what we're doing. But the key to this question in, in a spiritual sense as a practice is to not accept any of the answers your mind tries to give you to the question, who am I? Any definition you decide upon, saying I am this emotion or I am this title or I am this achievement, we remind ourselves that no, I am not just that. I am much more than that. I am beyond that, beyond this mind beyond my emotions, beyond the perceptions and ideas I have about myself. There is more to me than just these little things I use to define myself. These little identifiers that cage me into this identity I play, to the role I play, which happens to so many of us. And that's the whole of that practice. It's very simple when we're caught in the fullness of our daily life. Simply remind myself and ask, who am I really? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm stressing out right now. I'm very anxious. I have all this stuff to do, but who am I? Am I this anxiety? Am I this worry? Am I these what ifs? Am I basing all of my worth on this title I have or on this job I have or on this role I am playing? Well, if I am, maybe I should look beyond that and remind myself and not get caught in that melodrama, reminding myself I am actually more than that. These roles, these identifiers, these emotions, these triggers, while they affect me on one level, let me try to just sit with the fact that I am the infinite itself, that I am much more than these little things. And it's powerful because it gives us a new perspective in that moment. No matter where you are or what you're doing, we begin to see it from a little bit farther back, a little farther away. We, we pan the camera up, so to speak, and it makes it less heavy. It makes it just a little bit lighter of a load to carry, which for a lot of us, especially with the busyness and difficulty of life, can make all the difference. And the more we ask ourselves, who am I, the easier it gets to discard what doesn't serve us, what doesn't help us, what doesn't guide us towards truth. And instead we begin to embrace more and more what does, embracing our dharma, embracing what we really care about, while simultaneously letting go of all those things that before we begin to ask this question often dragged us down or chained us to this identity we took so seriously. This simple practice allows us, in the paraphrased words of Ram Dass, to live as souls, playing roles, rather than just seeing ourselves as this role and forgetting that we're a soul, forgetting that we are that. The second practice, and one I think is so often underlooked when it comes to just the idea of meditation in general, is allowing yourself to rest in the space between your thoughts throughout the whole of your day. This is the easiest way to integrate specifically the practice of meditation into a very busy life. Again, whether it's work or school or home responsibilities. So often when we are doing things or in what we are a part of, in the role, we allow our mind to consume the fullness of that time. We are constantly in the mind, constantly in the next worry, constantly in the idea of the past, whatever it might be. And while this is necessary to be in the mind and be thinking and be working and focusing on things, especially when we're busy, when we have time for reprieve, whether it be 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, whether it be eating, whether it be taking a break, resting, stretching, no matter where you are, what you're doing, when you're doing those things that allow you to step back from the busyness for just a moment, we often allow ourselves to continue being stuck in the mind during that time, and it feels like it's a continuation of that busyness. So the practice you can try is simply to rest in the space between those thoughts, to try to kind of simply sit or to be with whatever it is you're doing without trying to describe it, without trying to identify it, without trying to explain it. Simply witnessing the fullness of it. I always refer to it like watching a sunset. 
When we watch a sunset, we're not in our mind trying to describe the sunset. We're not trying to tell ourselves, oh, that sunset is orange and yellow and it's going down below the horizon and it's a, a giant ball of fire very far away. We're not telling ourselves that. We're simply with the sunset. We're being with that moment. We are being as that moment. So if you are eating lunch or taking a break or stretching or just breathing for 30 seconds in between workloads, whatever it might be, allow yourself to be as that moment the way you are with the sunset. Be as the stretch. Be as you are eating. Be as you are resting or just taking a pause. Don't allow the mind to supersede that and cause you more difficulty in those brief moments of reprieve from the busyness of work and life and school. The more you practice this, while at first it might seem difficult and you might forget to do so, over time, the more you do so, the easier it gets and it starts to become second nature to just kind of allow yourself to rest in the fullness of being between the tasks you are doing. And the third and final practice and one that I think is more so for the time right before and the third and final practice, one that I find is easiest to integrate in the mornings and then at night when we are you know, busy and getting ready but not fully dropped in to what we need to do, is to practice having a sangha, a virtual sangha, basically through audiobooks or lectures, right? If we have a very busy life and we don't have time to go to a temple or to go to events or to you know, read or to specifically sit down and deny what else is going on and, and meditate as a practice, you can always listen to these teachings, to these teachers that are now available and cover thousands of teachings dating back centuries while you are preparing, right? While I'm getting up in the morning and making breakfast and driving to work or if I'm driving home from work or preparing for the evening. All this time, a lot of us during that time are in the worry of what's to come or in the anxiety of what we just experienced. In the morning, we're thinking about all the worries we have for the day. And at the end of the day, we're thinking about how difficult that day was and letting that stress kind of consume us. But this time, we can use it to be in a space of mindfulness, in a space of reminders. These, these lectures, these teachings, they're kind of like consistent affirmations and consistent allowances for us to drop into what matters to us, to drop into these reminders and these powerful things that can help us see through the veils of suffering we experience due to our clinging. This is the dukkha that the Buddha is often talking about, the refusal of the mind to accept what is. Well, by having this divine association you could call with other seekers, with other practitioners and with teachers, we can allow ourselves to, during this busy time, hear these powerful lessons and really sit with them, really meditate on them, really listen to them as deeply as you can instead of letting that time be consumed by our own mind taking us farther away from the truth. And this is why for me, you know, one of the easiest ways to practice when my life is very busy, when we're taking plane rides and stuff like that, and it just seems like a chaotic time, is having lectures and listening to lectures and really trying to take that free time I would have had where I would have been stressing about something to come or trying to plan for something that I could just do later and it didn't have to do right now, I didn't have to overwork myself. Well, I can use that time to be with these timeless teachings and to remind myself again of my true nature and allow myself to just take a little bit of that weight off my shoulders. And it's a powerful and very simple way to do so because all you have to do is open your phone, click on the video and put it back. And now you have these teachings kind of ruminating through you, lifting your spirit, lifting your vibration while you are preparing for the day or decompressing from the day. And again, if you don't like lectures, you can do this with music, you can do this with sound healing. There's, there's so many different ways you can do this to take a busy life and, and just in those small spaces help you integrate practice where before maybe you thought practice wasn't possible. And those are just a few things that I like to do that help me in my life. Hopefully they can help you in yours as well. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them down below. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Ram Ram.